for the cheapest, fastest, most reliable muck coins on the market, check out my coin sponsors at AOEAH.com and use discount code MONEY for 3% off. Link in the description below. Welcome back, Money Team. This is Mad Money Shot. Sniff the Mad Cheese as always. Got a full offensive breakdown video for you guys uh, today, which is something that I typically do every single month, but I didn't put out one last month. I had planned to put this video out last month, but the entire month went by and I just didn't find a good opportunity. I was trying to save it for around the holidays and it just got to a point where I just didn't need to put it out. So I apologize for the people that look forward to my monthly uh, full breakdown videos. Uh, but this is, you know, I might, maybe I'll do a double drop this month. Maybe I'll do a defensive playbook as well. Let me know in the comment section if you guys Woo! would like to see me do that. And also hit the like button if you guys want to see me continue to do this series. Today's video is going to be the Baltimore Ravens offense, which if you guys follow my channel is probably one of my top three favorite playbooks. It's one of the few playbooks that I use when I'm not using the Saints. It's pretty much the, the Ravens and the Bills are probably the only two playbooks that I leave the Saints for just to do content in. Uh, but at the end of the day, the Ravens playbook is probably my second favorite going on, you know, pretty much every year. I mean, it's one of my most used playbooks. So I'm bringing you guys one of my best. This is definitely one of the best playbooks in the game when it comes to running. It's definitely one of the best playbooks in the game when it comes to creative, uh, you know, trick plays and, uh, you know, unique passing plays that no other playbook has. This playbook has it all because it's mostly pistol formations. And pistol formations are definitely my favorite formations to basically run out of outside of a traditional shotgun formation. I love running pistol formations. So this is one of my best playbooks. So if you guys want to see more, as always, like I said, hit the like button, let me know in the comment section. Other than that, these videos are really meant to show you guys uh, a taste of what you get if you buy my ebook. So if you guys want to check out any of my ebooks, links in the description and the top pinned comment. I fully recommend them. Other than that, let's go and get right to the video. Next up, we got the flanker drive. Start off with cover two. So I'm just going to go ahead and motion this guy in. Put the B route here on a 10 yard out route. And then I can just basically put the A route here on a drag. So I got an easy check down. The X route here is going to get open right over the middle once he splits the safeties. Can be a good play. Won't always be a one play touchdown, but it's definitely a good play. You could also, I mean, if you put the RB route here on the 10 yard out route, um, that works a little bit better because I really don't want uh, that, that 10 yard in route pulling the safety into that area because ultimately that's really best is to get him out of that area. And then you can see here we can get a little bit of a better throw and a little bit of a better catch and run. A little bit of a faster receiver I might be going. Next up, we'll pick cover to man. So same setup, just put the RB route, just flip the RB route to a 10-yard out route. That's really all you got to do. You don't really have to motion in the X route either. As you can see, it does a better job of getting past the cornerback if you just leave him out there. And it can be a very big play, including a possible one-play touchdown if you get a good catch and run. Next up, we'll do cover three. Against cover three, you're not going to have a lot of pass, bro, but if you have a mobile quarterback, you can survive in the pocket long enough. To make a one play touchdown out of this put the y route on a streak put the x route just leave the x route alone and he'll basically um, just cross the field quick enough to the point where you can get a one play touchdown but like i said you don't really have a ton of time in the pocket you don't have a lot of pass protection but it is a one play touchdown against cover three as well next up we'll choose cover four regular same setup same setup just motion this guy in put the running back on a streak and you'll see how this X route can really split the safeties. As long as you bullet and pass it up and away, you can get over the top of a cover four defense through the two safeties. Probably work a little better if you put the RB route on an out route instead of an in route. That will help split those safeties a little bit better. And then you can see I can just get right through the middle there. It's just a bad transition. I mean, that wasn't a one-play touchdown because I really get the best throw. But you can see I can split the safeties very easily as they try to pass the receiver from one zone to the next. Except we have the bunch trail. It's a good man-beating concept. Pretty much everything on this play beats man coverage. Uh, the B route here is probably the most successful as far as a deep route. But they all are man-beaters. Next up we have the verticals. Start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the RB route on a streak and then motion out the B route. You can put the A route on an out route or you can put the X route on a drag. I mean, I put him on an out route and then put the X route on a slant for a check down. But at the end of the day, I mean, I'm really just trying to, to isolate this wheel route outside here for a big catch and run. The tight end was open over the middle too. They both get open against cover two. Well, that's not even a tight end. It's Quez Watkins now, so even better. But the A route's a pretty good check down. As you can see, he's open underneath. I mean, I could take that. I mean, it's, it, everything's open here. You know, I mean, cover two's not a very good defense right now in Madden 22, but it's really easy to attack outside like this. 70, 70 Razor, 70 
let's go ahead and let's hit the uh, the quiz route real quick because it is there. As long as I can body that, you can see right there. I mean, it's it's not as open as the outside routes are though. Has a similar effect against cover two man. I'll do the exact same setup. And you'll see he just runs around the potential jam. Although the um, the tight end was open too again. I mean, I was watching the tight end when I threw that ball. But you can see everybody's open the same way. Against cover three. It's not as good. But if you motion this out, a lot of times the, uh, the A route will just get open right at the seam. That's probably the best thing you can get out of cover three out of this right now. You can put the X route here on a comeback once again and put the uh, the A route on a streak and the B route on a drag, similar to another play that I put out. And the RB route should get open across the field again, although I don't know why I didn't catch that. I guess it was just a bad throw. I mean, I said good accuracy. We'll do that again. And we'll get, uh, we'll get that playoff at some point. Why is he not catching this? Well, you can see it's gone. Do it one more time, just because if it lets me. Let's go do this one more time. Like I said, that that RB route is just streaking. I don't know why I didn't catch any of those. Next up, we're gonna do cover four. Exact same setup. Should be the exact same results. Although this takes a little bit longer. Because you gotta wait for this guy to pass. It's to the point too when I get that pass lead that I might not actually be able to catch it in bounds. But we'll do that again. So just wait till he crosses that safety, and then boom, there we go. That'll be it. If he catches it, yeah, there we go. So we got easy one play touchdown against Cover Four regular as well. Next up, we got the branch return. Against pretty much any defense, you can just put the B route on a streak, and then the A route on a flat. And you can really work the flat and the uh, the RB route concept together. If it's a man coverage, the flat route won't work. But if it's his own coverage, it'll typically get open underneath any of them. Against cover three, against cover three, put the B route on a streak. Motion out. You put your running back on a route and then motion him to the line. Then put the X route on a streak. And this is pretty much going to be the play. The B route will get forgotten uh, at some point by the cornerback. And then you can bullet and pass lead up the field for a very big play. If you streak the A route and the B route, the RB route will get open against just about any defense, man or zone. Um, as you can see right there, they're going to completely disregard him in the uh, in the uh, the shorter route because everything's going to get pulled back by the double streaks. As you can see right here, he has to react to that, or else you know there's a chance he get beat for a one point touchdown. So very big play. Next up, we have the Z spot. Another play that can work against just about any zone coverage. The B route here, I'd put on like a slanting check down. But at the end of the day, if it's a zone coverage, I'm reading the A route first. If it's there, I'll take it. If it's not there, typically the B route will be open above it. I'm sorry, the RB route since I'm on this side. But ultimately, it's going to be the same thing. Here we got a man coverage. Like I said, I wait for that RB route to get open. And it looked like he had position, but we still got that over the top. So man or zone, that route should get open against just about anything except for cover four. Next up, we got the 0 one trap. It's so another good inside handoff. It's probably the best one in this formation. As you can see right here, we get a huge lane right over the middle. It's going to work best against cover two man and zone as well because the safeties drop back. But at the end of the day, as long as you have a decently spread alignment, you can have successful runs with this particular play because the more spread the defense, the better when it comes to this type of uh, pulling trapping system. As you can see right there, I mean, I'm, I'm just sprinting right to a, a wall on that play. But at the end of the day, this is definitely the best run play. Just don't sprint too early. You can see right there. There we get the type of lanes that we're expecting. And it's a very easy run play. Traps are very good in this game. Next up, we have the bench swap. I like to streak the A route. Typically, the running back is going to be open against zone, and then the B route will be open against man. That's one of the better ways to look at it. You can get a good catch and run there if you get a good uh, look. The the corners, the other side, though, is pretty good. I'm going to move the ball over. 
Sometimes it's best to run to the other side because that's a slightly better man-beating play. So I'll streak the Y route, drag the A route, block the running back, and you'll see how this X route here can do a pretty good job of getting outside of any man or zone on that side. So you can really run this to either side. The running back, though, is a very good underneath uh, catch and run route. So that's something that definitely stands out in this play. But the setup otherwise would just be to streak either one of these tight ends and then drag the tight end underneath the streak for either side depending on which side you want to work on like i said to me the x route's probably the better of the two as you can see right here i'm not even sure what that was but you can see it gets outside of it. it looked like it was a cover four quarters or something like that next up we got the x dig it's another play i'm just gonna put the a route on a streak put the y route on a drag and this is going to be the play i'm pretty much gonna be working the drag and the b route the entire time there that was some sort of zone coverage which i tried to squeeze into the to the spacing but uh, didn't work out not a big deal though uh as like i said every route here i mean i could work i could split the field in half once again work the running back to the y to the x route or i could work the um the b route to the a route to the y route uh, which is really going to be, you know, they're, they're all pretty much going to get open. As you can see right here, like the running back check down is not bad. That particular play, I kind of forced it to it. But there's a lot of good uh, options here. So let's go and let's do this one more time. Let's like say we can't get really, you know, that's cover three. So I've got to not squeeze that right of the cover three seam. Um, you know, that's going to be best against cover three. It'll also be cover two inside the safety where the B route's really going to be best against cover two, though, as it looks like that's what we have here. And we'll get over the top fast enough receiver. We could probably get a catch and run. We'll play touchdown against that. And then the crossing routes on the other side are really just meant to be checkdowns, although you can see the drag route there became the first read as it just got open right away in front of the man coverage uh, defender. So, so lots of good routes on this play. Next up, we have the corner and goes. This is a cover one play. We have, uh, you know, every route here is pretty much designed to be a man beating play like these Y routes, uh, the tight ends. I mean, they're not great, you know, tight ends running these zig routes are not really best, but that route will beat man coverage and Goddard's route is also meant to beat man coverage on the other side. So you really want to go with the outside zig first and if that's not open, go to the other one. But you also have these uh, these stop and go routes, which if I put the B route on a streak, motion out brown here, I find that's gonna be the best way to give me a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. As you can see, a lot of times the, uh, the, the cornerback will bite and let you get over the top there. I just kind of got inside position from it. But you can get a one-play touchdown, especially if you have a faster receiver, which I didn't put Quez Watkins in. But that is an opportunity. I also can smart route them, as you can see right here. That'll give me an opportunity as well. Like I said, it's really just giving me inside release because I don't really have enough speed. But if I have my fastest receiver out there, I could have a one-play touchdown from that. Next up, we have the counter Y. It's one of the better run plays in the formation. I find it's obviously uh, designed to go outside, but it feels like it works better inside because a lot of times that's where the hole is going to open up. But this is designed to be an outside run. So you just basically have to use your blockers like right there. You have to be patient, let your blockers set up. And this can be a very good run play um, to the opposite direction of where most run plays are going to be expected from shotgun looks. Although there, I try to get through the hole and I just kind of got backdoored. But you can see how most run plays are going to be expected in the opposite direction. So this is a good play to catch your opponent off guard. Um, especially if, you, uh, if you're patient and you set, let your blockers set up. Which there, I actually kind of tried to sprint through the hole again. I still got a good carry. Next up, we got the read option. We're just going to read that read defender one more time. If the uh, defender drops back like he did there, you have to hand it off. As you can see, I basically set myself up for a bad play because I didn't make a good read. So it's really all about that read defender with the R above his head. You see right here, he crashes in so I can go with the quarterback. And you can see the pulling tight end really helps in this regard. So read defender one more time, drops back, got to hand it off. It's not necessarily the best play to hand it off. It's better to keep it with the quarterback, but it's really the only read because otherwise you're going to set yourself up for a bad play. So here we go once again, got to hand it off. Like I said, not a huge carry on the handoff. I really rather the defender uh, chase the handoff so that I could uh, make a bigger play with the quarterback. As right there, the tight end got caught up, but you can see this is a very good run play that can be used at like an inside zone on this formation if you just want to run it that way too. So let's go ahead and hit it with an inside zone decent inside run uh, just by holding it and handing it off to the running back next up we got the mesh spot it's another play that really works against just about anything the, the drags are going to be the first read and if the user follows the drags it'll clear out typically for the little comeback route or the little hook route right over the middle so it's really about these guys first i was going to try to force it but you guess yeah, i actually caught it <laughs> but you can see a computer's not going to follow those drag routes necessarily next up we have the middle high low 
Start off with cover two. I'm going to motion this guy in and put him on a streak. I'm going to put the A route on a drag. That's pretty much it. The Y route is going to be the read as he's pretty much going to get around that cover two cornerback. Although there he got bumped a little bit. Still made the play. Uh, might have to wait a little bit longer before making that throw. You can always motion across the tight end too. So that you can leave that, uh, that drag out there doing what he's doing. And then that will also create this guy getting open um, over the drag. So the drag can actually help against cover two. There's two ways to run it. Next up we got the quarterback draw. Anytime your opponent stretches their defense too thin, just hit them with a draw play. You always have a run play even though it's with the quarterback. A lot of people think that, you know, they see an empty backfield and the run's not an option. But you can always hit them with this run play. And it's a very good run play. It's still as good as it always was as long as you have a mobile quarterback. Next up we have the Y corner. This play here, you just got to motion in the X route, put him on a streak, and then put the A route on a drag. You can do anything you want with the other routes. But the Y route should get outside of just about any man or zone. As you can see right there, that's pretty much, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't matter. This route will beat just about anything. It looked like a man coverage. I tried on everything, including cover four. It worked the exact same way on all the defenses. You can see here, just as long as you wait for that guy to get outside the cornerback, bullet and pass it away, he'll beat every single defense in the game. Next up, out of the empty quads, we got the four verticals. This play here, you're really just reading from front to back the shortest route to the deeper routes. As you can see, they just constantly clear the middle. I mean, whether it's man or zone, pretty much every one of the middle tier routes should get open, especially the A and the Y route. Um, like I said, I mean, I'm not really, I don't know why he actually stopped there. I don't know if that was my fault for the pass that I threw because typically that route just continues on. I guess that's a bit of an option route. I know personally I'd like him to continue on. So realistically, you could change that to a slant or a drag. I wasn't aware that they added that this year, so let's go ahead and let's put him on a slant so he can continue to run that route. You can see here, even with a man zero, I mean, the, the pressure did force an incomplete pass, but, you know, that first route should get open against anything. Like I said, I can just put him on a drag or I can put him on a slant. It doesn't really matter. And like I said, it just clears the way for the next uh, the next series of routes. And we get a really good block, and we almost scored a touchdown there. So, like I said, this is just, you know, you're just reading middle front to back. The RB route here, you can see that was what looked like a cover three, and I just kind of bullet and pass lead away outside. Like I said, the spread of these receivers in this formation are really hard to stop. We'll actually pick a cover three. We'll do that again because, like I said, I do feel like that was some sort of cover three variation. But even if it wasn't, you can see this guy here is a very big play. That's actually, you could set up a cover three, won't play touchdown with that route very easily. Let's go ahead and put the X route on a comeback route, and you'll see how the Y route here is a very big play if I don't get blasted in the face as I'm throwing the ball. Going to do that again, give myself that drag one more time. That's that very easy cover three bomb. If I have a fast enough receiver, I'm not sure if Zach Pascal is fast enough, but you can see the separation there. He could have easily got through that hole. So we'll pick that play again, and we'll pick cover two, go through the whole system. Just do the 10 yard out route on the X route. And the RB route here is going to be the big play although there i safe caught that because that safety is coming over pretty quick against cover two if you run this from a hash to the open side of the field you can really have success to the b route as you can see once he gets over that cornerback you just bullet and pass lead away all i did was streak the a route i mean the a route will have success too i mean you can put the y route on the streak and it'll typically have success as you can see there i mean that's just you know like stealing i mean the y route really got in the way of the safety on that play said a route y route really doesn't matter like i said just bullet pass lead away and i didn't get a good catch and run that time but a very big cover two play next up we got the qb blast if your opponent's coming out too pass heavy you always have a run play it's a blast not a not a draw there's no delay so you're just running with the quarterback right away so anytime your opponent's going a little too run heavy, just hit him with this. If you have a fast quarterback, you can have a good carry and, and you can maintain, you know, the fact that they have to at least pay attention to, um, you know, the, the fact that you do have a running threat. You can flip the play too. So whatever side doesn't have, uh, you know, a defender in the gap, you can, you can address that and attack that. Except we got the counter Y. Just a good inside run play. Um, 
you know, there's a lot of these plays are basically inside runs. This here is kind of an inside run, but it's just in a different angle. So if your opponent is shifting in one direction too much, you could always hit him with this counter run. Next up, we have the double post. Start off with cover with uh, Tampa 2. So we're going to put the, uh, the B route here in a 10-yard out route, and then we're going to block the A route. This should allow the Y route to be a very easy one-play touchdown right over the middle. Um, I don't know why I keep getting these slow catch animations, because it should be an easy catch and run, an easy rat catch. But I don't think Madden 22 does that very well. So here we go one more time. Like I said, I don't know, maybe it's, maybe it's Jalen Hurts not being a smooth passer, but you can see how easy that is to beat over the top, over the middle. Next up, pick the PA slide. We'll pick cover three sky. Motion this guy across, put him on a streak, put the A route on a streak, and then block your running back. Put the X route on a comeback route. And the B route is going to be a very easy one play touchdown against cover three. It's just as long as you have adequate blocking. Although there, I threw it a little bit early, and you can still see that there's an opportunity for a catch and run one play touchdown. We'll do that again. It does take a little bit of time for this route to cross. But when it does get across, it does have some of the better separation that you're going to get in a cover through one play touchdown. As you can see right there, there's really nobody, the cornerback or the safety, even close. Next up out of the flex wild week, we have the sluggo seam. Just going to put the A route or the X route on a drag. It really doesn't matter. Just as long as the B route here um, is going against a cover one cornerback, he's typically going to bite and be a one play touchdown. So anybody running cover one, this is going to be the play to run. Next up, we'll pick the escape. Start off with Tampa 2. The running back really gets open against any defense, man or zone. It's a really good check down. It's, you could throw it at different times, even if it's man coverage. You could throw it at uh, when he's coming in the break or when he's leaving the break. Like I said, I could throw it there, just treat it like a, like a, like a circle route, or I can wait till he's going outside. This is not man coverage. It's cover 2, but at the same time, it's still successful. So we'll go ahead and move the ball over. Like I said, this beats anything. So I'm going to motion this guy in, put him on a streak, block the tight end. And you really put the B route on a slant or a drag. It really doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I'm shooting for that Y route, which you can see is a very big play against cover two. Could easily get a catch and run for a one-play touchdown if I get a better, uh, better throw. You can streak the tight end also, though, in the B route will get up the, the cover two uh, safeties pretty quickly. Although I didn't get a good catch and run there, but you can see how that also works. I'll do that one more time. As he just kind of cuts right in front of that safety. And then if I get a better bullet and pass lead, you can see I can catch and run that for an easy one play touchdown because the corner route really splits the safeties on the other side. Next up, I'll do cover two man. Pretty much the same setup applies. Show you that running back route. Like I said, he just gets open against anything. You really can throw it at just about any time, too, as he gets open again. Same setup, otherwise, the B route gets that free inside release, and you can really get over the top for another big play, although there, threw it a little bit early, but you can see how it beats that the same way. It doesn't get jammed. Because he's starting so close to the line, he doesn't really get jammed, which means that he really can just run right past these defenders. Although I'm not quite getting the best catch and run after but you can see it's a one play touchdown capable play next up we'll do cover three you can streak all your receivers and motion this guy in although this guy i'd want to put on a fade put the b route on a fade too to be honest just to pull this defense out away as far as possible and then you can see how this can really be an easy one play touchdown over the top although not quite getting good catch and runs definitely want to run this from a hash mark to the open side of the field as well block my running back because I'm not really going for the check down here and you can see how we can get that play although like I said I don't have a fat might not have a fast enough receiver or strong enough throw power quarterback but you can see you have a one play touchdown opportunity over the top the B route could score also we'll put the A route on a streak block the running back put the Y route on an out route and the X route on a comeback route and you'll see how the B route here can get past the safety although I don't know why that was a little bit overthrown. I'm going to do that one more time. So I can actually complete this pass. And for whatever reason, I get a bad throw, under pressure throw. But you can see it does get over the top of the cornerback and pass the safety. Do that again. 
make sure I get enough pass protection. And like I said, we're, we're not quite getting the, uh, the pass pro. We're getting a lot under pressures, but you can see it does score against cover three. Next up, we'll choose cover one. Going to be the exact same setup for the most part. I'll show you how this running back gets open once again. I actually threw that kind of early there, but you can see the running back gets open against everything. Next up, we have cover four quarters. It's a good cover four quarters play. Just put the X route on a comeback, and the B route here uh, will be a very good play, if not a one play touchdown. If I had Quez Watkins running that, it would be easily a one play touchdown. Just streak the A route, put the running back on a wheel route, and see what that does. Because I'm going to require a little bit more time but you can see it does hesitate that defender a little bit to help him get open a little bit more and the, and the tight end can be the key tight end can be the read next up we'll pick cover for regular cover for drop put the x route on a comeback and then smart route and then put the y route on a smart route as well motion this guy in and put the a route on a streak and you'll see how you can really flatten the depths of those deeper safeties and get a very big play right between the safeties once he skits inside the strong safety. You don't have to make that motion either. I mean, honestly, you could leave him out there and it'll work fine. Because you can see it's like once he splits those safeties, it's still pulling apart the safeties. And if you have a fast enough uh, receiver in that spot, like if I had Watkins in that spot, you could easily get gone. I, I smart route the wire out here. Because, like I said, I'm just trying to bring that safety down as much as possible. And like I said, I don't know if I have a fast enough receiver, but this can be a one-play touchdown with a really fast receiver. Looks like we have the inside zone. It's just the best run play in the formation. It's going to be best used against cover two man and zone because the safety drop back. But anytime your opponent gets too pass heavy on defense or leaves too big of a gap, you can just basically hit him with this. It's the best run play in the formation. Next up, we have the mesh spot. If your opponent follows the drags, a lot of time the B route here can really be the play in the middle of the field, but the computer's not really gonna do that. So you saw there, that actually was a man coverage that did beat that, but this play's really all about the drags, and if your opponent user follows one of the drags, then the route in the middle of the field gets open. That's pretty much the setup. Next up, we got the Y stick dig. Start off with Tampa 2. It's gonna motion this receiver in here. and put him on a streak. And the Y route here gets outside of a lot of defenses for a very big play. That was kind of a weird uh, catch and run because I, I was trying to catch inside the bubble. But you can see how that beats cover too. You can also beat him up the middle, put the A route on the streak here. And you'll have the same success to the X route, just as long as you, I don't know why he couldn't come over a little bit more there. But that's gonna be the same uh, the same idea. So let's do it one more time. So I don't know why it didn't work the first time. And it's kind of, you know, you could just bullet and pass it away from the safety and have success up the middle, though realistically the outside route is better against cover two. Next up, we'll choose cover two man. Same setup. Sometimes I like to drag the tight end though. And either cover two I find is helpful. And you can see how we can get over the top of cover two man the same way, although I didn't really get a good, very good pass lead outside, but you can see it still worked out. Next up, we'll choose cover three. Against cover three, same setup, although it's not going to work the exact same way. We will get uh, a good shot up the seam based off of the um, based off the throw. I mean, you could always fade this receiver too. I would just streak everybody else if you're doing this. That way, that the uh, the safety might stay home a little bit and then like I said it's not gonna be a, a big explosive play but it's a good play next up we have the red zone scissors start off with cover two it's another play that's really about the running back put the a route on a streak though and the running back is gonna get open against a lot of different things but on cover two you can see with that streaking receiver this guy can get open right over the middle for a catch and run one play touchdown although I did get caught but a faster receiver would have been gone Next up, we got cover two man. Same thing, streak the A route, B route gets inside. He's going pretty quick, as that's another one play touchdown opportunity. Although, there, I don't know, I didn't throw that ball with very good timing. We'll do that again. 
I'm going to do that one more time. The RB route is a really good man beater if you run to the open side of the field. You can see that he just breaks away from whoever's in coverage. So that's a good check down against just about any man coverage. That route really gets open against a lot of different zones as well. Like I said here, you can see he just basically doesn't get proud. I don't know why I didn't catch that, but you can see he's splitting the safeties very easily. Next up, we'll pick cover three. Pretty much the same play. We just want to streak the A route and flip the Y route. And you can see here, once again, it's getting past that safety for another one play touchdown, although I probably threw that a little bit early. Probably could have got more of a catch and run if I didn't throw it so quick. Next up, pick cover one hole. Same setup, just streak this tight end. And you can see how you can really get a play against cover one man deep. If you had a faster guy, it'd be even easier though. Last but not least, we'll pick cover four, cover four quarters. Same setup once again. Only we're gonna put this tent, this Y route on a 10 yard out route. That's gonna make that play a little bit easier. And you can see how it's pretty much the exact same thing. He just gets inside the safeties. Faster receiver could be gone for a one play touchdown. Next up, we got the shovel option. This play, you can really pitch it inside or outside. The inside play to the uh, to the running back is probably a little bit more dangerous of getting deflected. So that's something that, you know, maybe you want to try around a goal line or something like that. But the outside bumper, I feel like, um, is really the, the more explosive of the two. You could also keep it with the quarterback there. I probably could have kept it. But you really have two different options the way to go. Like right there, you can see there's a hole in the middle. Go ahead and flip that inside. If they crash in on the quarterback, then you want to pitch it outside. It's really that simple. I said, I'm really playing. I'm trying to see like a good opportunity to keep with the quarterback. You can see there we fumble. That's something that can happen. This is a play that's kind of a high risk, high reward when it comes to, um, you know, things like that. Next up, we got the Y curl. This play is really just a, a man beater to the X route. It's pretty much the only reason you're going to run this. It's a tight window throw. I don't find this gets open as well as it has in the past, but it's still a good man beater, whether you're facing man one, two zone. I'm sorry, man one, two, cover two. Uh, man, any man coverage, this is going to get open just as long as the cornerback doesn't jump the route in the break. Like right here, he never really got outside it, so I can, you know, force that away from the defender at any point in time. Based off of the new pass leading mechanics, you always have the ability to, to you know, basically pull, pull this away from the receiver to the point where it shouldn't get the ball in trouble too much. But that's really what this play is all about. If I call this play, it's going to be because I want to throw against the man coverage. You can see I'm getting a very consistent result. Next up, we got the Y off PA spot. So all I'm gonna do is put the B route on a streak and the A route or the RB route is a really good opening as any defense. You can put the X route on a slant or any number of things. When it's a zone coverage like this, you're really just playing the high-low concept, which is the fullback going out of the flat and the tight end. And that's pretty much gonna be the read the entire time. The streak is really just meant to pull back coverage for the rest of these routes. The X route here is a really good man beating route. So if I get a man coverage like this, uh, actually it was not a man coverage. It looked like it was a cover four, kind of reacted in a matching way. But either way, that's a good check down. That's why I'm going to go with the slant. But ultimately, I'm always going to be reading uh, these two routes over here. And then right here, I mean, my tight end's not necessarily the fastest guy. But if you have a faster tight end, he can definitely beat uh, man coverage. He didn't necessarily have success there. That was a, a scenario where I probably should have went to the slant. But that's pretty much going to be it. So here we go one more time. Like I said, we have, you know, I can just drop that right in there. I don't know, God, or drop that ball. He looked like he should have caught that. I tried to safe catch it. But at the end of the day, this is just one of the better passing concepts that you can work against any defense. Next up, we got the inside zone split. It's just a good inside run play for the formation. Um, you know, this, most of the best run plays in this formation are outside run plays. So this is not necessarily something that's going to get huge gains. But it's important to have in your audibles because a lot of times your opponent's going to start spreading to stop the outside runs. And that'll make it easier to run inside. Next up, we have the buck sweep read option. So we're just watching this read defender. If he crashes on the running back, he with the quarterback. If he drops back, you uh, hand it off to the running back. See right here, he crashes after the uh, receiver. You can see it just, it's a really big play in the opposite direction. Although, I don't know why Jalen Hurts is fumbling so much, to be honest with you. Probably want to save slide quite a bit, depending on who you're using at quarterback. Uh, at the end of the day, even if he does chase the running back, you can still go this way with the running back based off the fact that you're running away from him. So it's not like that's really the, the important part of the read. It's just a better play if he does chase the running back to go back with the quarterback. So that's why you do that. But if you see opportunity in this direction, you can really just take it. So like I said, right here, we're just going to ba basically take this wide. Um, you know, that's that's something that really isn't affected by what the read 
defender is doing. It's really just the quarterback, which is effective. Like I said right there, he runs after that guy. So that gives me an opportunity to keep with the quarterback. And then once again, we fumble, which is really weird. Like I said, you definitely want to, you know, get down, slide. It's a really explosive play, but for some reason, I'm getting a lot of fumble animations. Except with the halfback base. This is probably just the most consistent inside run, considering that every other run's an outside run. This is something you're going to want to run mostly against cover two man and zone. But it's a good inside handoff. You have lots of extra blocking because of all the extra tight ends in the direction you're going. So this is just definitely a very easy bread and butter run. Except we got the slip screen. This is a good play to the running back if your opponent's blitzing heavier, if they're running a lot of man coverages. Uh, it's a good play to, to mix in. It's not really a lot to it. Um, if you have a good quarterback that can throw off his back foot, though, you do have some other... Um, routes here but the way that this is designed you really can only make these throws if you have a, a like a Patrick Mahomes who can throw off his back foot because it pretty much just sets this up this way uh, but it's a good play to mix in your opponent won't see it coming it's a good a good variation I use these a lot in the red zone they have a lot of success start off with cover two every play we're gonna motion this guy in Against cover two, I'm just going to put the wire out on a slant. And I can really block either one of my tight ends. That's really up to me. But at the end of the day, this route here is going to get open deep. Uh, just as long as you, you know, bullet pass lead up. Wait till he splits the safeties. Next up, we'll pick cover two man. Against cover two man, all you really have to do is block everybody. I'm going to go out and I'm going to double team this edge here. And we'll have a lot of additional blocking. But you'll see the X route here will get open the exact same way right up in the middle as you can see we just drop it in the bucket with a very um you know not the fastest receiver in the game a 91 speed receiver getting right over the top of cover two man against cover three i'm just going to motion out this b route here put him on a comeback and then i'm just going to block everybody else i'll go and i'll double team this edge once again so the tight end isn't on his on his own and you can see we can get a very easy one play touchdown although i don't know how i got a poor accuracy throw there so I'm going to streak the running back, motion this guy out, and put him on a comeback route, then block my tight end. We'll go and we'll double team the edge here, and this is pretty much going to be the look. So I just really have to wait for J.J. Watt to get blocked, and then you can see how we get a one-play touchdown running across. Although I don't know why he safe caught that, but you can see he gets over the top. Next up, we have the buck sweep. This is a good run play against cover three, cover four. Um, you can see you get some pretty big runs. You get a lot of lanes to the outside. You typically want to run this to the open side of the field. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this field right here. Always run to the open side of the field. Cover three, cover four, even man coverages. You can see you just got a really easy sprint to the edge in there. I kind of ran out of running space. But you can see nothing really can test you. Like you can get outside of pretty much any defense pretty easily. And get some very big runs. This is one of my favorite run plays last year. It's still a really good play. Next up, we get the halfback base. It's just your best traditional inside run. Since a lot of these runs are exotic and to the outside, it's good to have an inside run. Nothing really to go over other than the fact that this will probably be best against cover two man and zone. You can see I'm actually reversing field quite a bit. It's working out pretty good. Next up, we got the PA post dig shot. We'll start off against Tampa 2. Against Tampa 2, let's motion in this route here. Put the B route on a 10 yard out route, and that's all we got to do. Cancel the play action really is up to you, but the X route here is going to get gone once he gets inside the free safety. Although there, I don't know what happened. I got good accuracy, but didn't get the catch. So I'll have to do that again. Like I said, motion this guy in just like the run play, um, just to keep that consistent. And we're going to see how this play here once again. Once this X route gets in there, we're just basically bullet and pass leading up and away. And I, I kind of stopped running, to be honest with you. That's when I get the touchdown. I thought I had the touchdown. But you can see it's a very easy one-play touchdown against cover two. Against cover two, man, it's going to be pretty similar, but a little different. Same setup on this play, only we're not going to motion in the X route. We're just going to leave him where he is. And we're going to basically use that. And then once this guy crosses here, you can see we just have to buy a little time. But he's going to get inside of that safety. Uh, the same way with the bump so this time not motioning him in he will cross that safety's face and once he does you just have the bullet and pass the inside at any point i think i was probably still running at this point but you can see now actually i got that ball off yeah i guess once he gets inside you can basically bullet and pass it away against cover three i'm gonna make that motion one more time this time we're gonna streak the the running back and then we're gonna put the uh the b route here on that 10 yard i'm sorry not a 10 yard route on a comeback route this time 
and this is going to basically create what we want it to be as the x route here is wide open again although i was under pressure so i got a bad throw but you can see how that cornerback is held down by this comeback route so let's go ahead and let's do that one more time like i said i'm gonna put this wire out here on a streak just have to buy a little bit of time i guess i'll wait for him to to get loose and now you can see even on the run as i'm getting some good accuracy passes on the run we're getting another one play touchdown against cover three on this play, you have to run from the hash mark to the short side of the field, motion on the X route, put the B route on a comeback route, and then you just have to buy time. Once Quez Watkins gets inside the free safety, just bullet, pass lead up, and you can see he gets past the uh, the strong safety for an easy one play touchdown. Next up, we have the power read. Similar setup, you're just going to watch this defender here. If he, if he bites on the running back, just go right up the field. And I don't know why Jalen Hurts is fumbling so much because it's not like he really does that in real life. Right here. You can see he stays home for the quarterback, just take it outside. You know, you say, just watch, you're just watching that read defender. That's all I really got to do. You sit right there. He stays outside for the running back, get a big lane going in the opposite direction. And I'm going to slide because I'm not trying to fumble again. Except we have the Y lead read option. It's another play. You're watching that read defender. If he crashes, you keep with the quarterback and you have a very big run. The tight end coming across is a really good block. As you can see, it's down to the safety. That's what makes this play so good is the tight end. So here the guy drops back. We gotta hand it off, or otherwise he just blasts my quarterback. Once I cover with the quarterback, if he crashes down, you keep it. If he drops back, you hand it off. Like I said here, getting some more good blocks. And I'm surprised Jalen Hurts didn't fumble because he's been fumbling all day. But still, a very good run play. Next up is the fullback dive. Just make sure to put a running back at the uh, fullback position. The faster, the better. On defense, we're just gonna pick random. This is a good inside run. Like I said, you want speed because it's just going to get you to the hole quicker. Uh, this is probably the best inside run in the formation, especially if your opponent is spreading. Most of the run plays from this are outside run plays, especially towards the tight end. So it's a good opportunity to use something like this, although there, I don't know who that was that just bust right there. It wasn't J.J. Watt. Um, but yeah, like I said, good inside run. Next up, we have the halfback counter weak. It's another good run play with no real adjustments. It's a good inside run play, as you see right there. It's not really going to have a lot of success outside. This play is really meant to take advantage of the fact that you have the two tight ends set. And a lot of people will really be shifting or paying attention to that side, giving you a good running opportunity in the opposite direction. Not to mention the fact that the actual counter stance, a lot of times, I'm not going to run against this, but the actual counter stance, a lot of times, where they go in one direction and then cut back, will really have the user chasing in the opposite direction towards the tight ends as well. Next up, we got the halfback power O. I'm going to go random 3-4 uh, again. This play here I find is best, especially when you have a gap, uh, which I don't really have here, to flip the play with the right stick and run in the other direction. But if you don't have that gap, if you don't have anything noticeable or any noticeable advantage, it's best just to run it as is and just treat it like a dive play, kind of run it right up the middle. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this a few times until I actually get a defense that's spread to the point where I have a gap advantage. Here we don't have that again. So like I said, I'll just run it like a normal run play or maybe just audible out of it entirely. But anytime you have a gap, I'm just going to go ahead and run it because I don't think I'm going to get it in this formation. But anytime you have a gap, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to flip this play with the right stick. You can see even here with the guy coming down. The only real reason I didn't get a better gain there is because my guard really wasn't uh, wasn't moving quick enough. We'll do this once again. Even with the double safety blitz uh, coming, you can see how that time, the uh, you know, even if you don't have that advantage, apparently it's best to flip it. I always flip this play in the past. So I find it's best just to flip it every single time. Uh, to me, it's better to have less blockers in the way. And you can see how you can have a lot of success, which that, you know, pulling guard really creates a good run lane every single time. Next up, we have the halfback power G. This is really going to work best against cover three and cover four zones. This play here doesn't really require any adjustments. It's just a good, uh, kind of like a stretch replacement. And a lot of times, since the cornerbacks in cover three and cover four drop back, you'll get a good opportunity to the outside. You can always motion out this tight end as well. And a lot of times, the cornerback will drop back, giving you even more space. Because at the end of the day, that's the guy that you're really trying to attack anyway. You can see here he's much further back. And it just gives me more opportunity to get to the edge before he has an opportunity to come up and make a play. Next up, we got the halfback power O. I'm going to go random 3-4 uh, again. This play here I find is best, especially when you have a gap, uh, which I don't really have here, to flip the play with the right stick and run in the other direction. But if you don't have that gap, if you don't have anything noticeable or any noticeable advantage, it's best just to run it as is and just treat it like a dive play, kind of run it right up the middle. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this a few times until I actually get a defense that's spread to the point where I have a gap advantage. Here we don't have that again. So like I said, I'll just run it like a normal run play or maybe just audible out of it entirely. 
But anytime you have a gap, I'm just going to go ahead and run it because I don't think I'm going to get it in this formation. But anytime you have a gap, I'm going to go ahead and flip this play with the right stick. You can see even here with the guy coming down. The only real reason I didn't get a better gain there is because my guard really wasn't uh, wasn't moving quick enough. We'll do this again. Even with the double safety blitz uh, coming, you can see how that time, the uh, you know, even if you don't have that advantage, apparently it's best to flip it. I always flip this play in the past. So I find it's best just to flip it every single time. Uh, to me, it's better to have less blockers in the way. And you can see how you can have a lot of success, which that, you know, pulling guard really creates a good run lane every single time. Like, this might be the only scenario where it's best to run the opposite direction. Although I still feel like, you know, you have to have a serious advantage to do that. If your opponent is spreading or shifting in the direction of the two tight end set, it makes it even easier to flip it and run it. Next up, we have the halfback toss. It's another good cover three or cover four play. Once again, motion out this tight end here. This is going to be the best way um, to pull back the cornerback so that you can get some big runs uh, to the toss. Although JJ Watt almost got me there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is a good cover three or cover four play because the cornerback's drop back also works well against man coverage. So we'll make that motion out. Um, you just want to make sure if you're going to make this motion that you have outside leverage, which I barely do. But you can see I forgot to put my fullback back in, too. So I'm not getting the best blocks. But you can see it's a very successful run against these type of defenses. Next up, I'm going to pick the motion PA power. O. I'm going to start off with cover two. We'll go to nickel package. We'll start off with Tampa two. It's going to be best to put the B route on a streak and motion him back to the other side of the line of scrimmage. It's pretty much the only adjustment you have to make. Everything else can play out as is. Uh, and you'll see that the X route here can really get open over the middle, though he did run into the streaking tight end, which was kind of, you know, that's a little bit of an issue. You could always put the B on a pass block, put the Y route on a streak and motion him out or put the fullback out. It really doesn't matter because these routes might do a better job of not running into uh, each other based on the fact that they're not as close. But that's something that you'll really can figure out um, as you're running the play. So I'm going to pick that again. We'll pick cover two man this time. Same setup for the A route. That's a very good route, as you can see right here. I'm not sure who is supposed to be in coverage. I think it's a cornerback, I would imagine. Next up, we'll pick cover three. So against cover three, you'll notice that the exact same setup will have success here because, like I said, that's pretty much just how this play works. So put the RB route on a streak, block the running back, block the tight end, put the B route on a streak and then motion him out and put him on a comeback. This is going to be a one-play touchdown against cover three. It's best if you run it from the hash mark to the short side of the field. Doing this will allow for the receiver to get across the field a little bit quicker. So we'll go ahead and we'll do this setup one more time. You can cancel the play action or you can let it run. It really doesn't matter. But you can see how we can get this across the cover three formation a lot easier. And if I really would have waited a second or two, I probably would have had easy one play touchdown there. So let's go and let's go to the replay real quick. You can see that this comeback route holds down the cover three cornerback's attention, allowing the receiver to get open over the top of them. So you can really run this from anywhere on the field, but I find short, short side of the field works best because it gets open over the top quicker. Next up, we've got the Niners toss. It's another play you can flip it if your opponent is doing too much as far as shifting and pinching but it doesn't work as well as if you run it to the the main side um, it's probably best against man coverage once again because typically the uh, the cornerbacks will drop back a little bit more than cover three i'd say the stretch play is probably a better run but this is definitely something that you can mix in i'm not really huge on this particular toss play but it's a better toss play than most because you don't have any pulling guards typically pulling guards just kind of get messed up Next up, we have the post shot. Start off with cover two. We'll, we'll leave this formation and go back to nickel. This play needs no adjustments at all. You just have to wait for the X route to get inside the safety and then bullet and pass lead up away from the, uh, the, the, you know, the strong safety who's in the area. As you can see right there, we get a very easy 50-yard one-play touchdown. Next up, we'll do cover two man. It's going to be the exact same setup. No adjustments. All we really have to do is wait for the X route once again to get inside the free safety. And then you can see it's a very easy one-play touchdown once again because the safety on the other side doesn't react to what's going on on the left side of the field. Next up, we'll do cover three. If the safety is playing off to the right like it is here because of the two tight end set, you really can attack this a couple different ways. Number one, you can wait for this receiver here to kind of get in between the two, and then you can bullet and pass lead away, and there is an opening for an easy one-play touchdown. Go ahead and I'll go to the replay because that's definitely a unique look. You really have to watch 
this particular receiver here once he gets to this point inside you can see the cornerback kind of fades off because he kind of has to take care of these other responsibilities to the tight end that's crossing the field and that creates separation at this point like i said bullet pass lead away from the free safety and you can really have some interesting opportunities you can see he gets right past but i didn't get a very good throw it's a very unique setup and it's going to take a lot of practice to master it but it's very helpful and you definitely probably need a fast receiver as you can see i got quiz Watkins out there but i'm getting 50 yard touchdowns every time next up we'll pick that again only this time we're going to go with cover four quarters actually no we didn't do cover one so let's do cover one hole against cover one and pretty much any defense you can just motion this guy in and put him on a streak or just leave him on the route he's in and he'll have success but ultimately the crossing routes are going to have more success against man covers than the actual uh one play touchdown will that's not to say that it won't work but i think i'd rather take the safety of the check down a route and the b route and you know basically just let that be my offense on this particular play although like i said if you do have a really fast receiver you can get some separation there but it's just not a guarantee where the crossing tight ends typically are next up we'll pick cover four quarters so streak the running back motion them out pass block everybody i'm gonna go ahead and double team this guy because i'm gonna try to roll away from jj watt hopefully that'll work as we just dance in the pocket a little bit and now you can see how this guy will eventually get open very easily against cover four quarters. Go and go to the replay. Cover four quarters is one of the harder defenses that I won't play touchdown against this year is because these, these zone coverages do a pretty good job. But this play here, because of the streak pulling everybody back, you can see how this receiver gets open underneath. And the quarters, the quarters on the other side don't even know that he's there. Go ahead and pick that play one more time. Last defense is cover four, uh, cover four regular. This can also be a natural one play touchdown against cover four. You just need a fast receiver to do it. But you can see how he gets behind the safety. And it's just basically uh, a, a lob pass at that point. Bullet and pass leading up also works. Next up, we got the corner strike. Typically, when it runs from the hash mark to the open side of the field because the corner route gets open against anything, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna block my running back, although that's a good uh, cover three zone check down, um, but that's not really something that I need to do. I could always run it like this and just motion him to the line, and um, he'll have success underneath a lot of things. But like I said, I don't really want uh, to worry about that route. I really want to go to the X route here, which that looks like a uh, cover two zone. It's going to get open. It's going to go up against man. It's going to go up against cover three, cover four. Now we're in a man zero look, running it to the short side, and you'll see how it gives him that, that outside look, and you can, you can sneak that in a little bit easier if you run to the short side of the field. Next up, we got the halfback counter. It's just a good run play to the weak side, um, although typically, you know, that pulling tight end does a little bit of a better job picking up there. It seems like they double team the end for some reason, but, um, but yeah, I mean, this is a good uh, short side run play. It's one of the better ones in the formation. A lot of times your opponent will be more focused on the bunch. They'll forget about the short side running opportunities. So here you can see all the defenders over there because it's a man coverage. And it really just makes it easy to go to the other side with a counter run. It's a very, very effective run play. Next up we have the PA boot slide. I'm just going to cancel this play action, either pre-snap or post-snap, and I'm just going to work front to back. The first man beater is going to be the RB route. The route closest is a good zone beater. That's the A route. But otherwise, it's really about those two routes, and then your comeback route is going to be your check down. Here we have a zone. Like I said, the A route will be open underneath that for a nice and easy catch and run. That's going to be your best zone beater. The RB route is going to be your best man beater. Against cover three, if you put the A route and the RB route on streaks, you can actually glitch out cover three as long as you're running from a hash mark to the open side of the field. You can see the B route here is wide open as the cornerback and safety are really just reacting to the streaks. And then the cornerback on the left side is reacting to the comeback. You can also motion this guy out if you want to, but it can be a little bit of a giveaway. You can also put the X route on a smart route to shorten it, and it won't really mess up the play or anything like that. But you can see how this guy here can really cross and create some big plays, if not one play touchdowns against that defense. Next up, we got the read option. Just a good inside handoff if the, uh, I mean, you get a really good block by that by that pulling. I think it's a tight end as long as you just basically read this defensive end right here. If he if he crashes in, you basically want to hold it with the, with the quarterback. Although there, I made a poor read. It's really all about that guy. As you see right here, he's pulling in. Like I said, this 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 uh, tight end coming across, laying that block is huge because he always seems to get to that next level and spring you. This is definitely one of the better um, inside zones right there. You see that the the read guy drops back. I'm going to hand it off. It's a very easy play to run. 
and it's a very successful play right here once again he takes that guy there although their their goddard didn't really get to that next level guy but it was still a successful run even without him not necessarily hitting that next you know that next form here we go once again he drops back look how big that hole is right in front of him like i said this is a phenomenal play next up we got the verticals start off with cover two if i can find one all I really got to do is put the A route on a streak, motion this guy out. If I put the RB route on an out route, it really helps to get the B route open because that's really who I'm going to be going for here. Although at the end of the day, um, you know, you don't have to do that last part. You don't have to put him on an out route. You can leave him doing what he's doing or you can block him or any number of things. Actually, in this formation, you can't really block him unless you motion him across the formation. If you motion him across the formation, you can then block him. But yeah, I mean, this still works. Just streaking the A route. I would probably want to give myself a dragging check down in this scenario, but you can see that you have a lot of space. Runs from the hash mark to the open side of the field, and you have a lot of space when it comes to throwing this guy against cover two. If I watch the replay, you really want to throw this ball once he's right about here. If he's even, he's leaving. This is pretty much the look. But you can see I've already got the ball throwing because at the end of the day, he can't flip his hips and, and catch up to me in full sprint. So it's not, this is not a throw that's in danger also works against cover two man you can really do the exact same setup for some reason a lot of times the a route will get open off the line based on the fact that they just can't get the jam and then you could always you know try to thread that needle before he gets to the safety that's one option next up we got the double iso just a good inside run anytime your opponent doesn't have uh if they give you gaps inside you really just gotta be able to punch this up the middle it's not anything special you can flip with the right stick and go in either direction but if you have lanes up the middle you do need a good inside run so this is going to be that play next up we have the pa cross shot i'm going to start off with cover two put the y route on a streak motion in the x route and put the b route on a 10 yard out route and this will be a very big play against cover two i don't need that check and release either i don't really need the play action running back all that stuff is really optional but you can see how that streak holds that safety off long enough that this receiver gets open right between the two safeties next up we'll do cover two man against cover two you need a little bit more of a speed advantage motion in the x route put the y route on a streak and put the b route on a 10 yard out route again and you'll see how the x route can get a very big uh, one play touchdown over the top splitting the safeties uh, but if the receiver's not fast enough he won't get off the jam he won't get enough separation next up we'll do cover three make that motion again put the b route on a comeback route this time and then the y route on a streak and like i said block everybody else i'm gonna slide my protection because i do want to uh, have a little bit of time in the pocket here as we get uh we accidentally pump fake there but you can see he gets open if i had threw that ball accurately with timing instead of the fake pump fake it would have been a one play touchdown well, let's go to the replay and just see how this guy here once again he pulls this uh cornerback down with the comeback route and like i said if i go back to when i threw the ball i'm guessing i when, when did i do this pump fake you can see that uh i don't even know where the quarterback is yeah okay so yeah that was the pump fake like i said you just bullet and pass leading once he gets inside the safety you're gonna bullet and pass lead away and like i said it was just a really bad throw animation but you see the separation he gets from the cornerback next up we'll do cover one against man cover just motion in the other receiver this is a much better man beater than the x route i don't necessarily anticipate um the other receiver getting open the way that i do anticipate this receiver getting open so we're making a lot of motions your opponent's probably not going to expect that you're coming across with a different route but that's a very good man beater on the b for outside next up we'll choose they already did cover three yeah we're gonna do cover four there to cover four quarters so same setup as cover one we're just gonna motion this guy in he's gonna be a better play and you'll notice once he gets across the formation that he's pretty much going to be wide open at this point uh, for a good play. I mean, there, I probably could have safe caught that if I could have had a little more time. I probably could have bullet and passed on that for a catch and run. But it's really going to be the best play against cover four. Next up, we got the PA Raven Flood. We'll go and we'll start off. We'll go back to nickel and we'll start off with Tampa 2. Against cover two, um, all you really have to do is put the B route on a 10 yard out route. I'm going to put the Y route on a streak. I'm going to motion in the X route one more time. And this is pretty much going to be the play. For some reason, this play seems to get better blocking. Uh, as you can see, the X route gets open pretty immediately, although I don't know if I made a good throw there, but it was a little late actually. Once he gets inside the free safety, just bullet and pass leading up. I'm going to watch the replay on that. 
as you can see, I mean, I could pretty much throw it right here. I mean, he's already open. And I think I really threw that ball late. If you watch the quarterback, I don't get that ball out of my hands for another five yards. Uh, but even still, bullet passing up would have made more of a difference because I didn't even get a good pass lead either. Next up, we'll pick cover two, man. Same setup. Nothing's really going to change here. It's going to motion this guy in. Put the Y route on a streak. Put the B route on a 10-yard out route. We, we keep leaving our check down because, like I said, the pass blocking is so much uh, so much improved in this particular play. But you can see, I don't know why I didn't get a better catch and run there. That was kind of weird. He got caught up, but you can see that's an easy one-play touchdown the same way. Well, we'll do this one more time. This time we'll pick cover three. Pretty much the same setup, only this time you're going to put the B route on a comeback route. That's really the only difference. I have my check down, which is the RB route, which will get wide open in the flat. But I'm really interested in this easy one-play touchdown. As you can see, he gets right past... The safety, I bullet and pass a little too much and then we don't catch the ball. So I'll do that again. You can block the uh, tight end, the running back, or the RB route, whatever. Block him if you'd like. Uh, extra pass protection, as you can see, that does help. But for whatever reason, like I said, we're, I don't know if we're going to there. I thought we weren't going to play it again. But you can see how easily that's a one-play touchdown against cover three. Do uh, cover one, same setup. Although you can put the B route on a streak, a drag, whatever you want. Whatever type of man-beating route you want there. And you'll see how the X route here can still have a lot of success, although I'm not really getting good pass leads in there. Boom, we still hit that touchdown. So, very good play. Do that again one more time. This time we're going to go cover zero. Against cover zero, you don't really need the uh, the blocking tight ends at all um, because that's, you know, you just want the extra pass protection. So you'll see how you can have success to the same route and you just basically block everybody because you have three running backs or two tight ends and a running back in the backfield. You get a lot of extra blocking. Go we'll pick that again. Then we'll pick cover for quarters. Seb's going to be the same. Just going to block everybody. We're going to put our B route on a comeback route. That's all we're going to do. Streak the tight end. Streak the Y route. And then we just got to buy some time in the pocket. Which you can see here, for whatever reason, he forgets to cover that guy completely. I'll go to the replay if you didn't see that. This is one of the glitchier cover four one play setups. Just gonna, let's watch the replay. As you'll see, this safety here... Gets so far out of his quarters covering this guy that he has to turn back to the streak, which is kind of weird. But at the same time, like I said, it's a really glitchy play. And at this point, there's this guy here. It becomes his responsibility, but he's too far gone. He's already reacting to the comeback route. So at that point, his bullet or lob and pass lead up and away. I'm going to do that one more time. This time we're going to pick regular cover four, cover four drop. And the setup will be the exact same. Only this time I forgot to uh, put that running back on anything. And you can see we can get over the top of this as well. Although you do need a real speed advantage for it to work against this particular defense. Next up we got the Raven counter lead. It's a very explosive run play. You can really run this to either side. You can flip it with the right stick. But the opportunity on this play, I mean, it's really hard to say. Because there's no second level on this side. It could be better to run to this side. Or it could be better to run to this side because there's a little bit more spacing. So it's really, uh, there's a couple different things that can make this play work. But you can see we chose the side where there's no second level. And we had more success uh, than the side where there's no spacing. You definitely want to go in the direction of least resistance here we go one more time like i said we don't really have too much of a gap over here but there is opportunity as you can see we do get through that hole the more spread apart the defense the better when it comes to counter runs this is another play where i have you know better opportunity to this side because there is no second level and that's really when it's going to be best to run this particular play next up out of the full house base we have the raven read option going to pick random on defense so read option plays are actually pretty good in Madden 23. I'm just going to read the R defender there, the read defender. If he crashes in on the handoff, I'm going to keep it with the quarterback. It's really that simple. Even there, I mean, he was right in front of me. But you can see how, you know, that, that really just is a good misdirection. A lot of guys, they don't react quickly enough when it comes to that. Next up, i got the wing PA cross. Go ahead and start off against Tampa 2. All we're going to do is put the A route on a streak, put the X route on a 10-yard out route. And this is pretty much going to be the play. The B route here will get open straight up the middle of the field. As you can see, the streak pulls back the safety. It might not always be a one-play touchdown, but it can definitely be an explosive play. You can block the Y route too, although he isn't a check and release. It's pretty much the same thing. And like I said, this is going to be a big play here, uh, which can be a catch and run if you have a fast enough receiver. Next up, we'll pick cover three. Pretty much going to be the same setup, except we're going to put the X route on a comeback. And then this is pretty much going to be the play here. As you can see, the B route here can get wide open. I don't know why I got poor accuracy because I wasn't under pressure, but you can see it was wide open. Let's go and let's do that again. Go ahead and block my tight end this time. 
Like I said, we're going to get uh, a very easy throw and uh, one play touchdown against cover three. Next up, we'll pick cover two man. Same setup, same result. As you can see, the A route is a good play as well as I could always make that throw, but uh, the same the same uh, receiver pretty much gets open. But like I said, if I want to hit the A route, that is an option. As you can see, he doesn't really get pressed. He's got a bullet pass it inside, and you can get open inside the safety there. Go ahead and pick that play again. Next, we'll do cover one man. Against cover one man, the dragging tight end really is one of the best receivers here, although I don't really have a good... I got a rookie, like a sixth round or seventh round rookie running it, but if I flipped that play, Goddard would do a much better job, and I'm sure he would get open uh, against pretty much any you know any man coverage. So good tight end will get open. Just make sure you have your fastest tight end there. You could also do the same setup that we did for cover three, and it'll work the same way, though, as we're just waiting for this B route to cross, and we can have a very big play, including a catch and run, one play touchdown if we have a fast enough receiver. Next up, we'll pick cover four quarters. Same setup against cover four. Just got to buy a little bit of time. And you can see how this guy here can split the safeties. Um, but for whatever reason, I'm not getting a lot of pass blocking. Next up, we got the wing power O. This play, you can flip with the right stick in either direction. It can be run inside or outside. On this particular play here, I think I can get the edge a little bit easier. As you can see there, I mean, it's really uh, it's really an inside-out run where you really are choosing if you want to go inside first, and then you can possibly bounce it outside. But you can really have success anywhere with this run. You're really just looking for your first hole inside, your second hole outside. It really depends on what you see pre-snap also. Like right here, I'm going to try to take it inside, but I can tell it's going to be best to bounce it outside. Although my cornerback, or my receiver didn't hold that cornerback down very well. This is a good run play that you can really run uh, multiple ways because of how it sets up. You always have outside containment because of the tight ends. Next up we have the jet pass fake zone. Another play that's really going to be best against man coverage, cover three, cover four, anything where the outside run defense really isn't that great. Just put your fastest receiver in this spot, and you'll see that you can get some very big run plays, uh, especially if you run to the open side of the field like I did there. You can flip it, and there's no real, um, you know, no real tell as far as the animation because it's an even formation. Although here you can see we don't have our fastest guy running it, and we're running it to the short side of the field. So that's really not the best way to go. But I just wanted to show that it is possible. So if your opponent starts to make adjustments, or shift or whatever they do to try to take this away you always do have the option to go the opposite way without them really having much time to change uh, their defensive setup next up we have the PA deep in we'll start off with cover three sky run to the hash mark to the open side of the field motion this guy across and then put the B route here on a comeback route and you'll see how the Y route can really get open outside of the cover three uh, safety over the top of the cover three cornerback because of the comeback route. Well, let's see that once again. You see the post route's gonna keep that safety at home enough that will allow for an outside throw. And then the cornerback's just biting on the comeback route. They, they typically bite on comeback routes, making this a very easy play. Next up, we'll choose cover two. It's cover two, just fade the X route and I'll block my running back. And you'll see how the Y route here will just get inside the cover two safety if you get a nice bullet and pass lead away you get a very big play against cover two zone the uh the b route is a good route for cover two zone as well if i motion out the running back and put him on a streak a lot of times the uh the b route, i mean the rb route's gonna be wide open too <laughs> to be honest with you pretty much every running back or everybody on this play is gonna be open the b route will get open on the outside as well cover two is not a very good defense when it comes to deep coverage I mean, I can motion across this guy if I want to keep my running back in the backfield, motion him across, put him on a streak, and the, that route will work. The the B, the B route is the one I'm going for here. As you can see, that'll get outside of it for a catch and run. So there's really, you know, multiple ways to attack cover two zone here. Against cover two man, we're going to pick that again. Motion that same route across. Block your running back, put the X route and fade. And you'll notice that the Y route here can beat uh, cover two inside as well, especially if he doesn't get outside the jam, which is kind of what um, the DB is going to uh, try to prevent. So let him get set. I'm actually hoping that he doesn't beat that jam because I want to get inside the safety there. And you can see we can get a very, uh, a very big play up the cover two seam.
could also motion this guy across, put him on a streak. Have a very similar effect. And once again, you know, he's just gonna get inside the safety. This one here is probably a little bit more traditional. As you can see, we'll call that a one play touchdown. So once again, multiple ways to attack cover two. Next up, we got the read option. It's all about that read defender once again. If he crashes in like he does here, you just keep with the quarterback. And you can see the running back a lot of times will turn to a blocker, though there he really didn't do much. But if you're playing against spread defenses like this will eventually spread defenses, a lot of times it's best to hand it off up the middle. Here we go once again. I mean, that was just a blitz. Everybody was coming in there. No way I could have predicted that. So, read defender. It's really the most important thing here. You see, once again, quarterback is the best option. Quarterbacks do tend to fumble those. You can see right there, he puts on the ball very, the ground on the ball very easily, which is stupid. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to go right towards this larger hole. I'm going to force this inside run play, like I was saying. Sometimes that's the best read if you have a spread defense, and this particular offense will spread a lot of defenses. So, I'm going to do that again. Like I said, forcing that inside handoff. Um, although there, you know, I just decided to keep it because that guy did come off the edge pretty quickly. But you can see how this formation really is the MVP when it comes to this particular run play. Next up, we got the zone alert bubble. It's going to be best against cover three. The handoff is going to be best against cover two. But the bubble screen is going to be best against cover three because typically the cornerbacks drop back. So you can see there I get an easy seven yards, even to the short side of the field. You can flip this formation and nobody will know because it doesn't really have any animations based on the fact that it's an even formation and run it to the open side of the field or wherever side you see an advantage. But ultimately this play is best to throw it to the bubble screen against cover three, cover four, hand it off against cover two. I'll go ahead and force the handoff. You can see it doesn't really work out too great. But against spread defenses and cover two defenses, it's going to be best to hand it off. Next up, we have the halfback counter. It's just a good run play in the opposite direction. You get a lot of pull and blockers. It's one of the better run plays in the formation. This is a very good running formation in general. You can flip the play with the right stick, but I don't find it really helps. You can also motion this receiver across to give yourself an additional blocker, but if it pulls the defender across, it's really not worth it because you're bringing the defender over. So if it's a man coverage like this appears to be, that's not a good idea. If it's a zone coverage, though, you'll typically get a blocking advantage from that. And then you can see how the pulling blockers really can set you up for some very big runs. This year, you can see we got our cover three on the other side. Very easy opportunity to go in the opposite direction. Just a very strong run play. Next up, we got the PA corner halfback slip. We'll start off with cover two man. We'll back out and pick a nickel package. It's going to streak the Y route, block the A route, put the X route on a 10 yard out route. And we can get a very good play to the B route once the safety pulls back. Uh, from the from the uh, the tight end, although I threw that ball way late. I mean, I had a lot of space there. Should have threw it way earlier. If I have a little bit of a faster tight end here, that definitely will help. That's part of the problem. Is I keep running this with super slow, um, super slow tight end, where I really could have a running back in that spot. So here we go once again. Like I said he's just splitting those safeties. I don't really have to wait for the tight end to cross because he's gonna he's gonna stay the, stay home for the tight end anyway. And we get a very big play. Go ahead, we'll pick that again. Next up, we'll choose cover three, where we had a cover three zone. All I have to do is put the X route here on a comeback, block the A route, and put the Y route on a streak. And that's all I really got to do. The B route here will cross for a very easy play, just as long as that wasn't messed up. I mean, I, could, I didn't get to catch a run there because of the accuracy of the throw. We'll go ahead and do that again. And we'll see how this is a very easy play. Like I said, I just have to wait for him to get through there. Although, I don't know if I'm getting a good catch and run. There we go. I, was, I, I don't know. I could have. That looks like a touchdown. But you can get much easier catch and runs than that. Next up, we'll pick cover one man. Again, it's pretty much any man coverage. The A route's really going to be the play as he'll get outside of it. So any man, or, any man coverage. Man zero, man one, man two. Next up, we have the speed option. This play here is really all about the pitch. Once again, I mean, the quarterback, once he gets taken up, then you're going to make that pitch to the running back. If they don't crash to the quarterback, you keep it with the quarterback. It's really that simple. You can see right here, I mean, I, I had plenty of blocking just to keep it with the quarterback, but the quarterback tends to fumble a little bit more. So if you're going to run with the quarterback, you definitely want to make sure that you uh, get down 
with that, you know, with those type of plays here. Like I said, sometimes the pitch can be a deterrent because he wasn't really committing. So by me doing that, I actually lost yards. You can also flip this play, like right here, that would be a good opportunity. And you can see how we can have success to the other side because the tight end does do a good job of getting around once you make that pitch and making a block. So you really can go in either direction. Like I said, if you have an extra safety in the box like we do there, make that pitch and boom, there's nothing really out here to stop you from getting an easy sprint for 10 yards. Next up, we got the stretch alert looky. The pass play is going to be best against man coverage. The stretch is going to be best against uh, pretty much everything else. Cover three, cover four. Um, the cornerbacks drop back, so you can typically get outside, although there didn't do a great job. But ultimately, as long as this guy here doesn't drop into that lane, you can take that throw at any point in time. Any zone coverage, you can still have success. But the read structure would be, to me, to basically hand this off and just beat your opponent outside if it's a cover three or a cover four zone. Next up, we got the triple option switch. It's another play where I'm really just reading that outside defender. I really want to try to do the pitch. The pitch is probably the best thing, but once again, I only have a, a tight end out here, a slower tight end. I really want to get my faster running back in at some point, but you can see I'm going to have success there. If he crashes down like this, you can see I can keep with the quarterback as well. Right here, we get some really good blocking downfield, and we're going to have a very easy explosive run play. I really like the triple option switch. This is one of my more favorite concepts. So watching the read defender one more time, like I say, crashes in on the back. You can see he goes after the pitch, so i got to keep with the quarterback. It's really that simple. Quarterbacks can't fumble, though, so it might be best to slide unless you have a quarterback with an ability that really you know, negates that. Here we go once again, get that pitch out. Like I said, if a second they crash in on the quarterback, it's a very easy play. The Ravens is one of the funnest formations, one of the funnest playbooks to use. Next up, we got the triple option slip. It's another play where I'm really looking for rev for leverage and reading that defender. Like right here, uh, he crashes in, so I just keep it, pitch it out. There, I'll pitch it out and get a fumble animation, but you can see how it still has success. Uh, a clean pitch would have been better, and I probably would have got a lot more yards. Like I said, right here, reading that defender, he drops back. You can always go the opposite way, but that's really the worst part of the run once again. All the inside runs are always the worst part, unless there's like huge gaping lanes in the middle. Uh, right here, once again, I can see tell by the blocking that keeping up with Hurts is definitely going to be the move, as the blocking was really just OP there. Always around the boundary, because like I said, quarterbacks can fumble, but at least they can fumble out of bounds. This here is not a good look. I probably wouldn't run against this at all, uh, but you can see we still get it out. Like I said, amongst all of that, we still get a very successful pitch play and run, but we were running into a lot of opposition. You need time to make this pitch. That's that's probably the most important thing. You can see right there, I probably got a kept with Hurts and had just as much success. Uh, but the pitch can be a little bit dangerous, so you can't run these plays too often. Next up, we have the triple option. We'll go random play. This play here, I mean, if I don't have, if I, like, here there's a defender, an extra box defender on the left side, so I'm not going to hand to the running back. I'm pretty much going to keep this and then try to work the pitch, although here the quarterback was a good option. If I had pitched it, it actually would have slowed it down. So you're really just reading where you have outside leverage. Like, here we have outside leverage to the left. I probably should have put a faster guy here, and I would have more success than my actual uh, tight end slash fullback. You typically want to try to put a running back here so you can kind of get around this edge. A little bit better but you can see we're still having success as we get a very easy wide looping run but here we go once again we got a guy dropping down into the box on the left side well now we're going to go that route you can see the defender doesn't really go there i'll go ahead and i'll do that pitch because i, I want to get that ball out but you can see we could have easily kept it with the quarterback the same way so it's all about leverage here i don't have leverage because we have an extra defender on that side so i know i have to go this way you can see how you know the pitch there was optional i probably should have kept it so here we got leverage on the other side got to run it that way like i said if i have a faster running back here it would definitely be helpful but we can still stretch it outside even with a slower or more average tight end here i got to go the other way got to watch this read defender so i get that pitch out and you can see how we'll have you know successful runs to both sides of the field it's very hard to stop rumble next up we got the ravens power gonna be best against cover two good inside run uh, I don't really care for this run compared to some of the other runs in this formation but it's something that I definitely want to mention because it can be a good inside run it can also be a good outside run I mean you really have your choice like if you have outside leverage off of that first block you can really take it inside or outside I find that this is um, I'm just not a power runner that's not typically how I like to run the football I like to run it to the you know either right up the gut or outside but this is a very good run play it should definitely be in the book next up we got the fade smash the running back here put him on a streak and you'll see how the B route will get outside of the safety pretty easily for a big catch and run I could probably catch that and go up the sideline if I'm running from a hash mark well we'll do that 
run it from a hash mark to the open side of the field, and I'll probably get more success. So we're gonna do that again. You can put this X route here on a smoke and it'll work even better because it doesn't really get in the way of the cornerback. But you can see this is a very you know easy wide looping cover two concept. Next up against cover two man. Pretty much the same idea. I'm just gonna streak the A route because that can be a good play against cover two man. You could also put this guy on a the X route on a slant or a drag since that particular route's not really gonna do much. But uh, you can see how this guy here can fight for outside leverage and you can get an easy play just as long as he gets outside leverage. There, it was actually a lot longer uh, of, a, of a reaction than I was expecting. Go ahead and do that one more time. Like I said, this B route here. A lot of times they can beat that jam a lot quicker. Like I said, this is just, you know, he's pushing, he's pushing him inside and he's basically bullet and pass lead outside once he gets that outside leverage. Next up, we have the jet pass fake zone. This is really gonna be best against like man cover two if there's not a cornerback out here. But this is pretty much the same play as the other one, but the running back doesn't block. I feel like against man coverages, this play does a little bit better. They're actually out of lane, but I just ran right into uh, I just ran right into the wrong guy. You can see how the tight end really gets off and does a good job of getting to that safety defender. That's really what makes this play successful. Is he doesn't really do that in the previous play because he expects the running back and the tight end to do that. So if you get man coverages, a lot of times you can run this play there. Once again, I'm just hitting the guns too quick. Try not to hit the sprint button until you get through the hole or you're going to run into issues like this. Like I said, right here, you see the tight end picks up, but I was already sprinting, so I couldn't turn up field. So save your gas until you get up field. Next up, we got the jet touch pass. So this play here, just have your fastest receiver here. The fullback and the tight end do a pretty good job of blocking down field, although the running back really takes his time getting up to the line. So I really find it's best to just follow the tight end, follow the uh, follow 81, because a lot of times the running back just doesn't come out in front of the receiver quick enough, and he doesn't really pay dividends there. So I'm just gonna follow 81, I'm gonna follow him, He's typically going to be my lead blocker right here. If it's if I get wide like that, then the running back will step up and make a play. So if you get that outside lane, the running back becomes more of, an, of, a, of a beneficial blocker. But otherwise, if it turns out to be an inside run, you're just going to want to do it to uh, to the tight end. They're actually backtracked so the running back would pick up that extra defender. So you really have to be cautious of how you use the running back, but the tight end does a much better job. Next up, we got the power option. It's another play that's really going to be best against uh, things like cover three and cover four. You can't flip this run, so I'm going to go in motion and across. Cover three, cover four, and man coverages. You're going to see how you can get some pretty glitchy pitches. Like right there, that was should have been a you know catch for a loss um, as the, the quarterback pretty much got plowed right away. But uh, that's pretty much a read. You see these pitch plays. Some of these pitch plays, you can really get the ball out through um, you know, these tackles through these defenders, they can see you can get a very explosive play. So this is definitely something you can keep with the quarterback. I haven't really had the opportunity yet. You see here, I can just cut it back and make a good run inside. I mean, it's a good option to we'll keep with the quarterback, but that would probably be best if you see a lane inside, if the outside stuff just really isn't there. Ultimately though, the pitch gets very, you know, that goes a good 10 yards and uh, you can get some very easy runs just sprinting to the outside with the halfback. So like I said, I'm, I was going to try to force it inside there. That wasn't really a good move. Let's go let's do that one more time. Like I said, that there, you know, some of these pitch plays, they just don't turn into fumbles no matter what uh, you do. A lot of times it's like you just pitch, especially these pitch plays, it's like you pitch it like right through the guy, like right there. I was definitely tackled. I waited for contact just to show how, you know, this this doesn't turn into fumbles very often. Let's go let's do that one more time. Like I said, I'll wait for that contact and I'll get that pitch out regardless. Although I'm really not worried about the result of the run. I just want to show how that pitch play is pretty uh, sound when it comes to not fumbling. Next up, we got the Stretch Alert Dragon. Go random. This play here, the B route's gonna be best against cover three, cover four. The slant's gonna be best against man coverage. I'll go ahead and I'll make this read here. I mean, that was a blitz in cornerback, so that's a very easy read. Uh, and the outside run's gonna be best against cover three and cover four as well. Although here, might have success because, you know, I, I just picked random one four, and it really doesn't matter, but ultimately, uh, man coverage a lot of times will have success with the with the run play as well. Except if you make a poor read though. So here we definitely have a man coverage. Like I said, I could run this because that fullback tight end should pick up that cornerback. So man, uh, cover three, cover four, you can have success with the run play. Cover three, you want to throw it to the B route, cover one, or man coverage, you want to throw it to the X route. Next up we have the triple option. 
It's another good play where you're really looking for leverage. This play here, the, the running back that I can have to hold A to get to is a really good inside or outside option. Like there we had a hole right over the guard, so I could really run that inside, but if that defensive end is in closer, I could always run it outside as well. So this is my first read. Hold the A button to get it to this guy. Uh, hold the A or X button with your Xbox or PlayStation. That's how you're going to get it to that particular player. Your second read is going to be to the pitch play, which once again, if there's nothing really out here, you can have a lot of success with. But once again, you're looking for leverage when it comes to plays like this. Do I have numbers? Do I have outside leverage right here? I mean, we have a cornerback and a safety. This is probably not the best looking. See, he's waiting for me. I'll just take it with the running back and run it right up the, or the quarterback and run it right up the middle. So if they're waiting for the pitch, obviously you don't want to do that. Here we can go the opposite way once again. Like I said, this is, if I have a faster guy and if the formation I was looking at was a little bit more tightly pinched, that would be a much better play to take outside. I'm just not really seeing a lot of opportunity for that, so I'm really trying to force it because this defense is spread to the point where it's not a really good call. But if that defense is, if, you're, if your left tackle is outside of their widest box defender, you're going to want to take that outside around that particular player. Here we go once again, they're crashing in. Like I said, I could have went either way. The pitch was bad because I'd already turned up field. But you can see, I mean, I, I probably could have held it with the quarterback. There's an, any number of ways you can have success with these runs. Here we go once again. I could take that inside. Like I said, if I had a faster guy there going, running into a different formation, maybe we'll actually back out and finally make this substitution. I'll go ahead and I'll pick that play one more time and actually get a good defense to look at so I can really run that particular play. So let's go and let's pick a cover three or like a three, four. Like here, that's a little bit closer. I could try to take that around outside, although um, I don't really want to loop that far around, especially with a, with a guy that's not that fast. But you can see how you can have success as long as the defensive box defender isn't too far outside of the left tackle. Except we have the halfback slip screen. This play here, you can motion this guy across and he can give you a pretty decent second option. Although in reality, it's really all going to be about the RB route. This here looks like it's going to get open in the flat though. As you can see, if it's a man coverage or that was actually a zone coverage, you can get that guy open. But at the end of the day, I'm really just going to call this because I want to throw the uh, I want to throw, throw the slip screen, which will definitely catch your opponent off guard, especially with all the moving parts of how this play is really going in opposite directions. Next up out of the pistol week, we got the halfback zone. It's a good inside run. It's one of the most important run plays in the formation. Uh, it just, you can see here, I mean, if you have a gap on this side, a lot of times you just get some really good blocking. I, I have a running back into my fullback spot, and it still does a really good job of creating that space. Although you're really looking for that gap. Like right there, there really wasn't a gap pre-snap. So that's going to be a play where you want to audible to a different run play. But anytime I have a gap, which like I said, once again, I don't really have that gap over the guard this time. You can flip it, try to run it the opposite way, try to get a little bit more success. But ultimately, this play is part of a read structure for a bigger run scheme, where if you have a gap over the guard, that's going to be the best time to run it. Here we don't have that gap. You can see it gets shut down. If I get a look where I have that gap, you can see we're going to have a very successful run. Here we got that gap right there, right in front of the guard. He's going to stack and pass off, although a fullback in this spot rather than third down running back like Kenny Gainwell probably would have blew up that uh, linebacker and done a much better job. Here we got that look again with that with that gap. You can see my, my blocking fullback isn't doing a great job on Isaiah Simmons, but he did good enough there that I can get a very good run. Here we go once again. DT in the gap. Not going to have success. It's really that simple although there i had much more success than i had in previous plays here we have that gap one more time like i said the, the fullback there does a really good job of blocking that next level and i can typically spring for a pretty big run next up we have the pa crossers we'll start off with cover two against cover two streak the a route put the x route on a 10 yard out route and run it from a hash mark to the short side of the field because the b route is in closer to the line of scrimmage based off of where i am on the field so this is the route here. Like I said, the B route here is going to be a big play once he gets inside the safety. If he, if I had a little bit more speed, it might have been a good catch and run, but you can see he slowed down for that ball. But we'll do that again. It's going to be the same setup. Timing's really key. Like I said, I'm just kind of waiting for him to split those safeties, and you can see how we can have a big play. A little bit more speed might be a one-play touchdown. Next up, we'll do cover three. Same setup, except you're going to put the X route on a comeback route this time and it's gonna be the exact same play once this B route here crosses the safety, although I get a little bit of an overthrow there because I kind of slid into pressure. Then we'll do that again. Cancel the play access so the running back can block a little bit quicker. And you can see how, as long as you throw that before the route stops, you can have a very big play, a very big one play touchdown against cover three. Next up we have the PA comebacks. 
You can run this against any man or zone. I find it's best to put the B route in the drag for a check down, although the A route does a pretty good job of beating man. Pretty much every route here will beat man except for the Y route. The Y route here, you just want to, you know, this is pretty much the main play is the, is the check and release. Against man coverage, you can see there it still gets open, but it's really best against cover three and cover four zone. That's pretty much the reason that I'm calling this play. As you can see here, you get this little pitch animation if you do it quick enough. And that's really just to frustrate your opponent. They didn't pass that since last year. That's still in the game. That's going to be best, like I said, against cover three, cover four, because there's not typically somebody here in the flat. And you can see the check and release just lets the defender in the area go. Like I said, this is really just something that uh, should be treated like a run play. This is like an option play where you can just basically get this instant pitch out and just be out in the flats here for a big catch and run just about every single time. But other than that, every route beats man as well and some decent zone beaters. Next up, we have the PA boot slide. So I'm just going to motion this guy in and put him on a drag. Then I'm going to put the A route on a streak. And the B route is really where my best tight end, my best receiving tight end should be because he's really going to be the route. Here looks like we had a cover two, although I'm not really sure. Looked like a cover two zone. You can see it's open over that. As long as I have my best, most athletic receiving tight end there, he should get open against just about anything. Here looks like we're going to have... Uh, cover two once again. Well, I'm not really sure. It looked like it was a cover two, but you can see he's getting open consistently. Even with, you know, that's that's my blocking tight end running this play. That's not anybody that I really really want running that route. As you can see here, I mean, that's something like I said. That's a face catch opportunity is what that is. So like I, I don't know what that particular um, defense was, but that's pretty much the look. Next up, we have the PA tight end slide. I'm going to start off with cover two. Against cover two, just put the Y route on a streak and motion to the line. And the X route here is going to have a lot of success once he gets past that press. As you can see, we can really just bullet and pass it away. If he doesn't get pushed in as far as he did there, that's really best. But that's really going to be, this is your best cover two concept because he does try to arch outside. So it really depends on, you know, how much of a release he gets. As you can see right here, we get a much better release and we could easily get a catch and run for a one play touchdown against cover two zone. This play is really about the fullback though. The crossing tight end is a good play, but if you have... Um, you know any zone coverage this fullback should get open underneath you just basically got to hit him in the flat real quick Typically you want to put a running back like a faster running back in this spot So you get some good catch and runs I, I'm too lazy to do that But that's really gonna be one of the best options on this play need more help or just want to show your support Then head over to my patreon and join my team where you can get exclusive content like ebooks and bonus plays as well as early access to my bits and more link in the description below